Hello, my name is Vahid. In this video, we are going to take a look at the Elsa Workflows dashboard to see what it looks like and how we can use it to create our workflows. In a previous video, I showed you how to set up Elsa dashboard, so now we look at its usage. As you can see, we have three main menus here. The first one, workflow definitions, workflow instances, and workflow registry. In workflow definitions, we have a list of our existing workflows, and we can have some actions on them, edit, unpublish, or publish, and delete. And we have this button that we can click to create a new workflow. Let's start with creating a simple workflow by clicking in this green start button we got this pop-up that we can see all of the activities that are available to us for now I'll just use the HTTP endpoint enter a path let's name it hello simply just that and create a HTTP response to and we say hi and we said ok for the HTTP status code we need to publish it to see the results and see how it works but before that let's see what we have here we have three round buttons here the one with double arrows when we click, we have the general information of the workflow. The name, display name, ID, latest version. It's just our, uh, we have just created this workflow. So it's version one, it's not published and it's in draft status. We also have a history tab here, version history. We just now have one version. Uh, but if we have another versions, we have some options here. We can view it View previous version delete them or revert to a previous version Another button here is the one with the question mark on it and Then we click we have this pop-up that this mm, explains some actions That is uh, we can delete connections by right clicking on the connection we can add an extra connection by holding the shift key and selecting the plus button and then the activity that we want the connection to we can pan using the drag and drop and we can zoom in and zoom out using a scroll wheel so let's see how we can add or remove a connection we have a connection here let's right click on it to see what will happen yeah the connection removes and it got here let's add it at the connection again we hold shift key click on this plus and then click on this activity and we get back this connection and we can pan it by drag and on this view and we can zoom out and zoom in by using the mouse wheel all right now we have this gear button that shows the settings dialog we can name our workflow let's say our simple workflow we have a display name it's a name that we get in the list the difference between name and display name is that we can query the workflow uh, through the APIs with the name but the display name is just something that we can uh, see in the list and we can use a better descriptive name uh, let's say A starting workflow 
for demo and we have a description that we can add some notes for later reference or uh, something or whatever we want we have these variables tab that we can add some workflow specific variables as you can see it's in JSON format uh, let's add a variable for this workflow name name it creator name and enter my name all right we use it later in the workflow we have this workflow context in workflow context tab we have this type field that we can provide the fully qualified name of our workflow context type name which is an application specific type that we use through our workflow uh, let's say we have some document that we can pass through this workflow we can provide it using uh, this workflow context and we should actually we should uh, provide a workflow context provider so we can easily have access to that document properties through the workflow in every uh, activity custom activities and in the steps and configuration that we can make the other field is the workflow context fidelity that has two options burst and activity it determines how often does our context is saved or loaded we can set it to bears that means in uh, workflow execution or we can set it to activity so in every uh, step on uh, workflow it would be loaded or saved the other tab that we have is the advanced tab we can define some tags here that we can use it to query our API to fetch this workflow or a bunch of workflows with similar tags the persistent behavior is uh, like the fidelity field that we saw in workflow context but it's uh, have three options and it's about the workflow instance how often we want to persist it in our database we can persist it during each, each activity execution workflow bears that we said about earlier and then it's suspended the other field is channel that I couldn't find a clear explanation of it and uh, maybe later I can find something and the last field is the singleton field that we can enable it to uh, have only one instance of the workflow executing at any time let's say we have some tasks that we uh, run it every five seconds but we don't want to have uh, a new instance of the workflow when another one is still executing this field ensures that now let's publish our workflow and see if it works I said hello yeah I have a previous workflow that conflicts with this one so maybe I should delete that one <coughs> it's my preparation one let's try it again and we get this high now let's use that variable that uh, we defined in this settings i have created a variable name creator name i just want to change that to uh, say hi to creator let's choose liquid 
and variables dot creator name here save and publish it again test it and we get this here so we see the variables working too here in this uh, publish button we have two other options export and import we can export our workflow in a JSON format let's see how it looks like we have in this JSON some info about the workflow its ID our display name and name and even our variable our activities are listed here you can see our HTTP endpoint activity and this uh, response activity yeah we can use it to export and import this form let's take a look at here now we have two versions of this workflow we can view the previous one the only thing that we changed was this content here and we can view the current one that is shown with the check mark and we can see that our content is changed to this liquid expression let's revert to the previous version to see what will happen I revert to this version it creates a new version which is not published we can publish it again and see that it gets to its former behavior all right it's the workflow definitions and the designer another menu that we have it's uh, workflow instances that we can here see the instances of the workflow we have three executions and three versions of this workflow each one with one execution and one instance here we can view cancel or delete each one of these instances or we can select and do to them in a bulk by clicking on this we have this uh, workflow and this green box around it that means it's have been executed in this workflow we just had uh, one execution path but we can see what happened during this execution we have got an uh, HTTP request with get method to the path hello our request had these headers and then this we have this HTTP response we have another tab here activity state that shows a JSON object of this uh, of the state of this activity during the execution as we can see the content have been set to this value and a status code and other things that is related to this activity or the previous activity like that we can see its properties here also we can see the variables uh, states during the execution of this activity we have this general tab that we have some uh, info about this activity when is last time it was executed finished created or faulted that this activity have not been faulted its version id etc and then we have this workflow registry menu that we can see all of our workflows as you may know also provide different persistency providers uh, programmatic 
workflow provider, BLO BI storage, workflow provider, and database workflow provider. That uh, the database is what we're using now. It's just uh, in memory, but it's uh, the database provider. And we have this uh, workflow definition that we created just now. We can edit it, create a new workflow, and see other workflows that is registered with this instance. Uh, as you may know, we can define workflows through uh, C sharp code, and and that's the Elsa dashboard. Thank you.